Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Marry with Children, Ladies of Marry with Children documentary. As we look back on the over 11 seasons of the cult classic comedy show, Married with Children, which aired in the 80s and the 90s in USA and became a global ph uh, phenomenon all across the world, aired and dubbed in so many languages, uh, seen in all the continents from South America to Australia to Europe, uh, to, uh, to the Far East as well. Uh, Mary with Children has gone the globe. Uh, this uh, documentary will look at all the guest stars that have appeared throughout the 11 seasons. There have been numerous actresses that have appeared. Some of them have made their uh, guest, guest star debut on Mary with Children, the likes of uh, Denise Richards, uh, Tiffany T Teeson, uh, its name, but a few, but so many talented actresses got their break in Marry with Children. This week we go to season 11, episode 19, and we go to the birthday boy tie. And this episode is roughly about Jefferson Darcy, Ted McGinley's character, getting a, a get finally getting a job and uh, go, going out of the sort of boy tie label of Marcy Darcy. He becomes a new aerobics instructor. And one of the ladies that he meets in this class is our guest uh, this evening, the one and only uh, Susan uh, uh, Isaacs. Um, Susan, tell me about Married with Children. How did that opportunity come to your doorstep uh, back? I suppose it aired in 1997, but you yes. probably got the gig in uh, 1996 and probably began shooting uh, yeah, in the late 1996. How did that opportunity come about for you? Well, I had I had gone to film school um, at UCLA and just was acting in a lot of other people's movies and eventually just said, all right, I'll just do this. And in the couple of years that since my since I graduated, I became sort of a go-to character actor for a lot of casting directors. And I think it was Monica Swan. I, I can't remember who the casting director was, but they were just like, yeah, bring in Susan. Cause I was, I was later in, I was in the Groundlings um, improv group. A lot of people from Saturday Night Live, you know, um, Will Ferrell was in the class coming up behind me. So I just had a reputation of being a good comedic actor workhorse who could show up and, and, and do things. So that's how I ended up with that. And um, it, it's very interesting. I mean, it's a global phenomenon now, but when you look back on it, Fox had just been an upstart fourth network, a time when we only had three networks and Fox was making you know bold choices. They had brought in the Tracy Ullman show, um, of course, The Simpsons and at the time, uh, Married with Children had a very, very small budget, um, was, um, you know, they were known for being like crass and irresponsible and disrespectful. And they kind of broke open a lot of what you see today. At the time, it was kind of, it was a little bit scandalizing for the more um, delicate people but it was quite it was it, it cost you know there's a reason that you know it's a global phenomenon I mean they weren't afraid to have characters be sarcastic to each other and rude to each other but I had the great opportunity through this casting director who just would call me in like go in and audition for blah blah you know so that's what I did a lot of in those days and I suppose that Susan excuse me you can just walk into Jefferson Darcy class are you on the list? Well, no, but I'm Miss Blythe. <laughs> nice try, honey. We get four wives a day and a couple of husbands. <laughs> well, maybe if you gave up your spot, they'd all fit. You just better be glad I am weak from dying. Season 11 uh, was your guest star appearance. I suppose yeah. after the third season, Married with Children was um, yeah. one of the big, best uh, TV ratings oh, uh, yeah. you, 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 all across America. So when the opportunity came with Married with Children, season 11 at this stage, obviously probably such such a big hit scene yeah. in so many households, all of all in cable TV uh, channels all across mm -hmm. the United States. So when that opportunity came to you, were you delighted in terms of having that oh. on your resume? And was it a big sort of honor for you at the time to have something like that on your CV? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, any actor, any any work is is an honor. It's, it's, it's just the opportunity to play. 
really. Um, no, it was a great honor. It had, yeah, it had been season 11, so it had well established itself. And I was delighted, especially to work with like Katie. And well, as I'll get to it, I had the opportunity to also work with Katie um, and Ed in another episode um, and Amanda. But just, you know, you know, I, my line was like, it's Jeffers size, you know come in and knock it out of the park. You know, you're just kind of the one hit wonder, come in and, and knock the line out of the park. But it was really, really fun. It was a great atmosphere. I was so delighted to be there. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned that inside in the uh, the studio, the gym uh, studio, mm -hmm. when uh, Jefferson uh, got his lines, uh, got his gig as uh, the gym instructor. So basically, was it just basically you were just mimicking uh, what dancing to the music and what went on in the sort of uh, the gym? Yeah, well, the, the 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 funny thing about the episode is he finally gets a job. And of course, he turns the job not into a job, but now he's got a cult following because he's, you know, Ted McGinley's good looking guy, you know, you know, Jeff. And that it the one time that he gets a job, it actually gets out of control. And he has these following of, you know, girls in leotards, you know, have a, you know, a little club, you know, it's Jeff's size. You know, we got all excited with him. So that was that was the joke. That was the joke of the episode. He finally gets a job and it goes bad for all the wrong reasons you know now suddenly he's got all these girls who are after him and i suppose um susan in terms of that you mentioned being in the studio and uh, uh, uh amanda beer sort of walks in in and uh, she comes up to one of the ladies and uh, mm -hmm. one lady says excuse me uh you can can you just can't walk into a jefferson darcy class uh, are you on the list yeah. and then amanda sort of read by no but i'm his sort of wife and uh, didn't we see the part as well, then, where uh, Jefferson says it's his birthday and he goes through a whole tunnel of ladies and they're all slapping him in his yeah. uh, backside, which really says uh, Marcy's mm -hmm. um, temper sort of fuming at the, yeah. at the seams, sort of such. So in, yeah. in, in, in terms of that sort of sequence, in terms of shooting that sort of scene, did, was that maybe a half an hour, an hour sort of a shoot inside in that, that day in terms of that scene? And uh, was there several different sequences to it? Well, the way, um, I mean, I don't know if you've talked about this with other words, with a three camera shoot in front of a live audience, you will have a table read, you will block it out. And then the day before shooting in front of a live audience, you will get one, you, you will get all the blocking down. And then on the last day, you will bring in an audience and usually you will film it twice. So that process starts with a table read, then there's blocking and you know there was a lot of moving parts in that scene. So we had a good day of blocking and not just that scene, like you'd be called in for the day and you might be on the set working and, and rehearsing and, and blocking everything for a couple hours. And then there'll be a run through at the end and then the network will come in and check everything and maybe give notes. They didn't like that line. They She's slapping him too hard. She needs to slap him harder, uh, all those sorts of things. So your involvement as an actor now, if you if it's just a quick line, you may not be called in on the first day of the table read, but you will be called in soon after. So I think I was there for probably three days, maybe four. It's hard to remember, but it would have been rehearsal, um, run through, camera blocking day, because after you get it all done, they have to bring in the cameras and get it, and then the last day would be the performance. And the you it's usually shot twice. Sometimes it's shot without an audience first as a safety. So then I think we spent a good amount of time, a few, a, a, at least an hour on that scene in front of a live audience, just because of all the moving parts. Um, so that's typically how something would work. It's not like a one camera film where you just go scene by scene by scene, you get it in the can. There are, it's more like a, a theater piece okay. in front of a live audience, yeah. And I suppose, uh, Susan, in terms of, uh, I've spoken to a number of actresses so far and they've taught me how friendly and sort of warming uh, Ed O'Neill yeah. was. But uh, in oh, terms yeah. of your first episode, uh, in terms of working with uh, Ted McGinley, what was Ted McGinley like to, uh, in terms of guest actresses and guest actors that appeared on the set? Was yeah. he very welcoming? Uh, did he introduce oh, yeah. himself? Uh, did he, was he open to uh, a discussion and sort of stuff like that? Well, 
in that scene in particular, like when I first say it's Jeff size, you know, he wasn't involved mm. in that, but he was such a good sport mm. um, in like letting him slap his butt. And, you know, obviously his character was having a lot of fun, but he, both he and Amanda, and I really liked Amanda too. You know, you can go on a set where you're just there for the week or maybe even just a few days and maybe the stars are just too busy or overloaded with information or have a wall around them, you know, as you can understand, they're if they're a big name or whatever. But he, um, but everyone on the set was like, "Hey, welcome, let's play." I mean, it was such a collegial atmosphere. Of it didn't matter if you were there that week. I mean, I did. I was there for two episodes, but um, you you just felt like you belonged. And um, and Jeff was. That, um, I mean, Ted was that way too. He would just. He was like. He didn't. I mean, he was just like you know, batter me. I'm. He, I'm game. I mean, he was like. He was glad to have a job and be there, and he treated everyone you know very well. And I suppose that uh, Susan, uh, doing my research, uh, I only found out that you uh, did uh, one episode. But to a quick uh, discussion before we started the interview, yeah. you informed me that you're more than one episode of Married yeah. with Children. Could you enlighten yeah. us a bit, bit about that? Sure. Well, I did the birthday boy toy episode and, um, you know, I chatted with Amanda a little bit, but there was another episode called Lesby Friends where Marcy's identical cousin was coming and they had to deal with her because she was kind of brash and, it, you know, turned out she was a lesbian or whatever. Um, and so they had to get a body double. They needed okay. someone to rehearse um, and someone to shoot. Um, and I think, you know, this was 97 I don't think the Ellen episode had happened yet. So they actually, we did not film this in front of a live audience okay. um, because they didn't want, um, they didn't want, you know, at that time, public public opinion about all that would have been, they would have been scandalized. So we just shot it, um, we just shot it without an audience. But they needed someone to stand in and rehearse with her when she was basically rehearse, you know, when Marcy was in scenes with her cousin, they needed the back of the head, all of that. So, you know, they remembered me from the previous episode and the casting director was like, you know, Susan's the workhorse, bring her in. And the, my hair was a little bit more blonde, but my hair looked like, and they put a wig on me, um, but I was the right build and so, they liked me from the other episode, so they brought me in to basically be her um, understudy double for all the scenes in which um, uh, Marcy and her cousin had to be in the same scene. And it was and really fun. And I suppose, uh, Susan, I suppose, lastly, before I let you go, uh, time is sort of caught up on us. Uh, let's pretend there was a Married with Children encyclopedia and they went to all the actresses who have played a role mm -hmm. in Married with Children. And they said to you, Susan I Isaacs, in terms of your appearances and your memories in Married with Children, we want you to write down uh, two sentences uh, to describe what it was like for you, uh, your whole experience on the set of Married with Children, mm -hmm. to sum it all up uh, what would you like those two sentences to read um that i was delighted to to participate with such great comic actors and to, that they felt made me feel like i was part of the team that i was there to like a good improv you know it's like hey come on and what have you got they were everyone was i mean that's i'm rambling on more than two sentences, but they made me feel like I belonged and I was there to play, play the game with them. Uh, on that note, uh, Susan Isaacs, an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of your two episodes in uh, Marry with Children, uh, Lesby Friends, and the episode we've been speaking to you about, uh, Jefferson, uh, the birthday boy tie, uh, season 11, yeah. episode 19. Uh, Susan Isaacs, uh, for it's it's time we have to say bye bye to you and bye bye to Jeffers eyes as well for the time <laughs> being. Uh, but an absolute pleasure talking to you today for really you your memories of uh, playing uh, your role in Married with Children on which aired all right across the United States on March the 31st, 1997. But for me, for the moment, Jim Conlon, to you, Susan Isaacs, take care and stay safe. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.